the stomach-churning horrors of this video may be distressing to some viewers. Buckle up as we recount one of the most horrific and brutal events in human history. It wasn't just guns and bombs that soldiers had to fear during World War II, but also the savage jaws of killer crocodiles. We bring you the gruesome truth behind the bloodiest crocodile attack ever recorded, where over 900 men were mercilessly torn apart and devoured alive by these prehistoric monsters. In the final months of World War II, the Japanese army found themselves in a desperate position. Allied forces had gained the upper hand, pushing the Japanese out of Burma and back towards their home islands. As the Allied forces closed in, the Japanese were forced to retreat through the dense and treacherous swamps of Ramri Island, off the coast of present-day Myanmar. Little did they know, they were not alone in these swamps. Ramri Island was home to one of the largest populations of saltwater crocodiles in the world, and the soldiers' retreat would soon bring them face to face with a vicious enemy, far worse than the British guns. Before the fighting began, the city of Akyab was captured by the Allies, a combination of British and Indian troops. By the 2nd of January 1945, a plan was made ready when it was apparent that the 14th Army's advancement into central Burma would go beyond its airbase range of Imphal and Agartala in India. So on the 14th of January, the Indian Division received orders to attack Ramri seven days later. When the real battle began, the beachhead in Ramri was secured by a motor launch and a landing craft that landed on the beaches west of Chowk Pu, a small town on Ramri Island. The British assault troops were delayed for a while, but soon got moving. The next day, the beachhead was taken over by the 4th Indian Infantry Brigade. Right after landing, they proceeded to occupy Chowk Pu. They also occupied Mai In and Yam Balk, but soon encountered resistance from the Japanese troops. The Japanese defenders at Yam Balk were put under pressure, but they refused to give in, although the British soldiers followed up closely in case they succumbed. Landing on Chiduba Island in the Bay of Bengal, the British Royal Marine Force found it unoccupied. The Japanese soldiers found the Marine Force and resisted them with stern determination. But the British Army had their Indian backup. And so, two infantry brigades reached Chiduba and relieved the Royal Marine Force after taking control over more parts of the island as they came. So when the British Army outflanked the Japanese stronghold, over 900 Japanese defenders abandoned the base and moved to join more Japanese soldiers across the island. But the Allies had already taken over parts of the island, so the Japanese soldiers were in a tight position. Trying to get across the island, the Japanese soldiers were met with a choice to either pass through the 16-kilometer mangrove swamp or surrender to the British Army. Having controlled the island for some time, the Japanese soldiers knew that the island was home to crocodiles, but believed that they posed no threat to them. Little did they know that they were about to face a terrifying ordeal. On the night of February 19, 1945, the British forces launched an attack on the Japanese soldiers, forcing them to flee into the mangrove swamps. The soldiers found themselves trapped in the swampy waters, surrounded by dense vegetation and with limited visibility. To avoid detection, the soldiers moved slowly and cautiously through the swamp. The escape started well. Soldiers were slowly making their way through the swamps. Some soldiers were slower than others, and a few stragglers started to fall behind. It was at this point that the horrors began. The ordeal started when a group of soldiers heard a stomach-churning scream. As they quickly turned, they saw their comrade being dragged under the water by three giant saltwater crocodiles. Limbs were flying in the air, and the water turned bright red. This is when the real frenzy began. The sound of the horror and vicious movements of the first attack woke hundreds of sleeping saltwater crocs within the swamps. The soldiers then realized the true horror of what they had walked into. During the following hours, the soldiers were in a state of shock as they watched the crocodiles drag their fellow comrades away. The reptiles were relentless, and it seemed that there was no escape from their jaws. 
The soldiers tried to defend themselves, but their weapons were no match for the powerful jaws of the crocodiles. They had no choice but to flee deeper into the swamp. The crocodiles attacked in a terrifying manner, using their powerful jaws to crush and drag their prey underwater. With lightning-fast movements, the crocodiles were able to quickly subdue the soldiers, leaving them with little chance of escape. Witness accounts from some of the few survivors of the attack stated that the crocodiles killed the soldiers in several ways, including drowning, suffocating, crushing them, or simply removing their limbs with their razor-sharp teeth in violent, powerful movements. What made matters worse was the weeks leading up to the event, the Japanese soldiers had hunted much of the crocodile's natural prey, as there were a thousand hungry soldiers to feed. This left the crocodiles agitated and hungry. The soldiers waded through waist-deep water, trying to find higher ground, but the crocodiles were everywhere. The reptiles attacked from all angles, and it was impossible to defend against them. Some soldiers tried to climb trees, but the crocodiles climbed after them, dragging them down to the water. The soldiers were becoming exhausted, and their morale was plummeting. They could see no end to the attack, and it seemed that they would all be killed by the crocodiles. The only hope was to reach the safety of the shoreline, but that was easier said than done, as these killer apex predators are one of the most efficient killers on the planet. Saltwater crocodiles are the largest crocodiles in the world, with unique strengths and behaviors. Growing up to 19 feet long, these creatures hate surprises and are pretty reclusive and shy. They are one of the few animals you don't want to sneak up on. But as proven repeatedly, being shy doesn't mean zero killer instincts or a lack of brute strength. They are known to have the strongest bite force ever measured in an animal. With such brute force, they can crush a human skull in one bite. And this is why they are one of the most lethal animals on the planet. Compared to their gator cousins, these giant lizards inflict severe damage, and they are also very territorial. So these beasts would rather you stay out and keep a reasonable distance from their territory. Because of this, the soldiers on that fateful night really stood no chance against these apex predators. But this gruesome incident did not go unwitnessed. A veteran of the Burma campaign and Canadian naturalist, Bruce Wright, gave a vivid description of the event in his collection, saying, That night, the 19th of February 1945, was the most horrible that any member of the ML crews ever experienced. The scattered rifle shots in the pitch black swamp, punctuated by the screams of wounded men crushed in the jaws of huge reptiles, and the blurred, worrying sound of spinning crocodiles made a cacophony of hell that has rarely been duplicated on Earth. At dawn, the vultures arrived to clean up what the crocodiles had left. Of about 1,000 Japanese soldiers that entered the swamps of Ramri, only 20 were found alive. Jack Jacob, a lieutenant general in the Indian Army, also wrote about the bloodbath in the mangroves that night. Recounting the experience in his memoir, he said, Over a thousand soldiers of the Japanese garrison retreated into the crocodile-infested mangrove swamps. We went in with boats and interpreters, using loud hailers asking them to come out. Not a single one did. Saltwater crocodiles, some of them well over 20 feet, 6.1 meters long, frequented these waters. It is not difficult to imagine what happened to the Japanese who took refuge in the mangroves. These relentless soldiers probably concluded that their gods were against them and thus gave in to judgment. Choosing the dark swamps over kneeling for the British soldiers was remarkably brave. Some accounts claim that 20 men survived the crocodile massacre, while others claimed it was more. The Indian 15th Corps had Mother Nature on their side without even asking for it. Before the crocodile attack, these soldiers gave their best to defend their territory, fighting relentlessly until they couldn't. However, their strength couldn't be compared to that of these hungry reptiles as their mighty jaws snapped their limbs, 
and their razor-sharp teeth cut through the flesh of the frightened soldiers. And to date, no one has ever witnessed such a massive killing of humans by a group of deadly predators. The saltwater crocodiles of the Ramri mangrove swamp truly made history.